सेंट्रल मैरिन फिशरी रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट कोची डॉक्टर आर एस कुंडित सर पी आई नाहेब का आनंद एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी आई डॉक्टर शक्ति रंजन प्राणिकाई वेलकम बोथ ऑफ यू टू दिस टू दिस लेक्चर सीरीज मेनली बेस्ड ऑन चेंजिंग फिश कंज्यूमर्स एंड ट्रोबल मार्केट सेगमेंटेशन इन इंडिया दिस लेक्चर सीरीज इज ऑर्गेनाइज अंडर द डोमेन ऑफ कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग प्रोग्राम अंडर दिस प्रोजेक्ट नाहेब कास्ट एंड इट्स मेन स्टेक होल्डर्स इज द हायर एजुकेशन स्टूडेंट्स अल्टीमेटली अदर स्टेक होल्डर्स जस्ट लाइक द पॉलिसी मेकर्स फैकल्टीज एंड द साइंटिस्ट आर ऑल्सो कवर्ड इन दिस नाहेब कास्ट प्रोजेक्ट वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड वन ईयर एंड वी आर गोइंग थ्रू द सेकेंड ईयर ऑफ दिस ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट the main project uh, area is the research and the capacity building program under the capacity building program we are organizing uh, the lecture series and the webinars and numbers of agricultural commodities are also covered in this project and one of the commodity is the fisheries in this fisheries research area we are mainly target the price forecasting market research market identifications market development structural changes and innovations and many more in this uh, in this area uh, is, uh, we are going to establish the center of market intelligence under anand agriculture university on in this project only sir in this uh, uh, few words i like to uh, welcome you uh, uh, our uh, our speaker dr uh, sam s salim sir principal scientist socio economic evolution and technology transfer set division kochi has over 20 years of research and development on marine fisheries economics domestic marketing and international trade climate change impacts of fisheries and fishers socio economics and livelihood policy research and management collaborating and expanding network within and outside the institute for supporting and implementing country level fisheries management and fishers welfare actions and initiative adept in survey design tools development and implementation data analysis progress reporting report writing presentations project control policy dialogues Liaises as needed with international partners represent CMFRI in various forums internally and externally and support resource mobilizations. Initiate meaningful collaboration and substantial efforts in attracting external funds to collaborate in research and development projects with FAO, Belmont Forum, AISRF, IAFT, CSIRO, and MSU. Substantial efforts and accolades in empowering women and stakeholders benefits. develop the indian fish market feed for better marketing efficiency methodological tools for assessing the vulnerability of coastal households consequent to climate change and commendable efforts in empowering the stakeholders present works of importance include developing climate resilient adaptations and mitigation plan economic efficiency assessment value chain interventions reducing demand and supply relationship and fishers empowerment with special emphasis on women excellent communication skills completed over 50 national and international project well supported by more than 300 publications under the credit of dr sam s salim sir we are very fortunate and uh, without wasting a time i welcome you sir um, uh, for this lecture um, over to you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you shakti thank you senior colleagues from uh, nahep anand agriculture university uh, first of all um, happy weekend i think lot of people will be in the youtube link and um, first of all thank you very much for inviting me into this event uh it's quite a surprising that uh, we get lot of opportunities to talk across during covid times covid is a period when we are unable to move but the webinar the ott and all these things has created an opportunity a platform where we could talk to many people across i've been doing like a webinars almost every day nowadays and thank you for roping in me and uh, uh, i'm grateful to the almighty that i got a chance to talk, speak to you all uh, i work in cmfri cmfri central marine fisheries institute which is the largest fisheries institute in the, in the world we have about 150 scientists and fortunately if not for gujarat seema for is nothing because gujarat poses the maximum amount of fish to the country and also the maximum amount of fish to the consumers in the country so gujarat assumes great significance but uh, i have one thing to tell at the end when gujarat doesn't eat a lot of fish instead it feeds the people 
So I always tell my students that uh, if you talk about Punjab and Haryana as the feeding bowl of uh, cereals in this country, probably the feeding bowl of fishes in this country comes from Gujarat and to a large extent from Andhra Pradesh. So my topic is uh, changing behavior of fish consumers and probable market segmentation in India. I might take around an hour. I try to rush in. I'm more interested in getting back to you and interacting with you rather than this. In the event of preparing these slides, I understood that uh, what I know is a handful and I what don't know is the ocean. That's a very popular Tamil, Tamil thing written in under Thirukural. So as an economist, I always learn data. India is the third largest producer of fish in the world and the second largest in aquaculture. But remember, we are way behind China, almost 10 times. But we are catching up. And with the global partnership of India's foreign policy and under the COVID times, our market is gradually expanding with the annual export reaching around 7 billion US dollars, around 46,000 crores during, during code has come down. The contribution also has come a bit. That is a mistake. It was from 1.24. It has come down to 0.91 over the years. It is not because fisheries hasn't performed well, but the other sectors and the service sector and industry has been performing extremely well. But the contribution of that to the agriculture GDP is always on the high. And from a 4.84, now it has increased to 5.23. And employment is huge. 14 million people is involved in marine sector and more and more. Up to around 30 million people are involved in the fishery sector in the country. But our matter of contention for today is the per capita fish availability. Now it's found to be nine. Nine is among the fish eating population. That's the first data set which I need to provide. Six is across the whole population. But this nine could be as low as one to 35 to 40 kilograms throughout the country. We might have uh, some of the small union territories like Lakshadweep, Arunachal, small state like Arunachal Pradesh, Dadra Nagar Haveli, Tripura, which may be consuming as good as 30. Kerala might be consuming as high as 30. But across the major chunk areas of this country, we find that the consumption of fish is quite low, leading to dismal consumption and protein requirement throughout the country. We have huge fisheries resources. I'll talk about the resources as a, on the inland side. We have the rivers, the canals, the reservoirs, ponds and tanks, estuaries, floodplains, brackish water. If you put, non put the multiple use of water, our production could be as big as what China is producing. But what happens is because of the legal pluralism and many other factors, many other complexities involved, the taboo for fish, there is no preference, movement of fish, the difference distance between the consumption centers and production centers, our production isn't as high as we expect. But the sector is growing impressively. The fishery sector is growing impressively at around 10 to 12% throughout the, throughout the year over the last two decades. But our major contention today would be the coastline because the fish consumers are mostly allocated across the coastal states. Uh, National Center for Applied Economic Research has studied and we found that over the period of time, the fish consumers are not increasing highly, but among the fish consumers, the amount of fish they eat is on the high. That's why we have more consumption. We talk about a 56% during the 2000. Now it's around 60%. And in 2025, we are poised to have around 70% of the people eating fish. So we have a huge ex exclusive economic zone. We have a potential of around 3.94 million tons in this continental shelf of 0.53 million square kilometers. But as per, the, as per the validity, now we have we, we tell that our production could be as high as 4.41 million tons in the future. So there is a paradigm shift in the fish production during the recent years. If you see the comparison of marine and inland over the years, we initially had more of marine during the 2090s and all. But from 2005 onwards, we had a great shift. We had a great shift in the sense that the current production, if you see, more than 80% of the total fish product, 75% of the total fish production comes from the marine sector, inland sector. And the marine sector is gradually toppling around and it, it's showing, showing a base, basal value of around 3.5 to 3.7 million tons. Now, but even then, if you see, 
Globally also, this has been the trend. The world capture fisheries production hovers around 80 million tons over the last 10, 15, 10 years. But now if you see the, the aquaculture production is on the high and also the inland capture production is also not showing as good and impressive growth when compared to the aquaculture sector. And uh, what is so unique about India, India versus world, uh, India versus marine fish catch trend is, the Indian marine fish catch is gradually increasing. Now, during the period 2001 to 2013, or this particular graph talks about 2013, as we go up to 2020 or so, 19 or so, we find that the Indian marine catch is slowly increasing, increasing, because now we have around 4.41 million tons, and now we are slowly reaching there. Whereas the world marine catch is, is declining over the years, which, which indicates that our fish is quite well enough when compared to other countries. So the fish which lands has a value. The fish is being valued at two different levels. One, it might be valued at the point of first sales, or it could be valued at the point of last sales. I put at the producer level and at the consumer level. And it's heartening to note that over the last decade, the fish production has increased tremendously. But more than that, the value of fish has increased even much more, leading from a 22,000 crores in 2010 to around 2019, it was around 60.8 thousand tons, 60.8 thousand tons. So, so 60,000 tons, 22,000 tons, that is a great increase. And in the valuation side also, when you see from it has increased from 36,000 tons to around 92,000 tons. Leave alone the inflationary component of it, even then the sector has been growing very impressively. Now, if you compare to the last year, 2018 and 19 also, the landings just increased by 2.53. From 3.46, it, it became 3.56 million tons. But the landings and evaluation increased 15%. The retail center evaluation increased 14%. All this indicates that there are genuinely buyers for fish. The price of fish is increasing. But, and also the marketing efficiency. The marketing efficiency indicates that how much does a producer get of what the consumer pay? So when I tell in 2019, the fisherman share of consumer rupees 65.92, it indicates that for the 100 rupees which a consumer pay like me or Shakti, the fisherman gets around 66 rupees is well enough. But remember for high value fishes like sea fish, pomfret and all, it could be as high as 85%. And for the low value fish, I, I, I go with a knot. My fingers are crossed when I tell sardine is a low value fish, it is as low as 40 to 45%. Now, if you put this into perspective, the, the different states has got different valuation. And for now, the state which has got the largest fish landings is Tamil Nadu. But when it comes to valuation, Gujarat tops the list with 20,000 crores. That means almost 25% of the total fish produced in the country is being valued in, in Gujarat. So this is across the state, 20, 20 and 21%, for closely followed by Kerala, 20 and 19%. This is because Kerala is one particular state where we have parity between demand and supply relationship. The state of self-sufficient is not self-sufficient and we import to the tune of 20 to 25% of fish over the years. And now this is how the valuation of uh, the unit value has increased. When I was talking about 67 rupees is the price of one kilogram of fish, now it has almost increased three times to 170 in 2019 and two and a half times in the case of retail center prices. So again, I have input the inflation component of it. Even if the inflation component is being put, it is around two and three times in the case of landing center prices as well as the retail center prices. And this is how the marketing efficiencies work. The marketing efficiency, I'm specifically interested in states like Kerala, where it is 72%, which indicates that the fishermen gets more what the consumer pay. And Gujarat is also not behind. Uh, it is on 66%, which indicates that 66 rupees of what the consumer pays reaches the, the fishermen. Now, we have got worried, worrying states like Orissa and Tamil Nadu, where what happens is the fish is not consumed to the extent where it is being produced. Their fishes move across to different states, as a result of which it is going to be lower, lower producer share of the consumer's rupees. So, in general, I believe that Anything which is more than 65% indicates that it's a good marketing efficiency when you compare the whole lot of fish. Now, everybody talks about COVID nowadays. Everybody's interested in COVID. From March till, till now, COVID, I'm not sure whether we'll be able to celebrate Christmas also because of COVID. 
uh, God bless all of us so that we'll have uh, a COVID-free Christmas at least because most of the festivities have gone now. So Seema Farai was also interested in assessing the monetary losses during COVID. We understood that COVID is not restricted to 21 days when Prime Minister had the initial, in initial 21 days, that's a phase one. We thought that it might extend because there is considerable gestation period. So we thought that COVID might extend up to 90 days is what, what we visualized during the initial time. And for a period of 21 days of COVID, we thought the total losses in the sector could be around 10,000 crores in the marine fishery sector. So when I, when I arrived at this 10,000 crores, this was submitted to the ministry for developing that Prime Minister Matsi Sampadi Yojana. Some of the inputs were taken from this. We are extremely grateful for our work has been acknowledged. And we understood the landing center valuation because of this 21 days, compared to last 2019 and 20, we had a total loss of 3,427 crores in which there could be an additional loss of wage loss of 1,750 crores. You know that when fishing is being done, more than 70 to 80% of the total cost is being resorted to employment as well as diesel. So there was 1,750 crores being lost in that. The marketing enrollment plays a very important 35% is what they, what they get. They had a loss of 1,200 crores. The export sector was hugely affected. And export sector, remember one thing that most of the capacity, the plans of are, are in idle, idling capacity. The operations are just 60 to 70%. So they lost 3,000 crores because many were in transshipment. Some of the deals were canceled. Some of the alerts were done. There was losses across the different cargo containers, terminals and all. So total loss of 10,000 crores is being established for 21 days. And as the days progresses, the current value of this is somewhere like 50,000 crores because right from February, March, April, May, June, and July, August, around seven months, we are expected to have a loss of around 50,000 crores. Now, when you talk about consumption, the most important thing which comes into picture is the marine fish landings. Now, if you ask me, there is 8 million tons coming from inland sector and five million ton, uh, 4 million tons is coming from, from marine sector. Why alone are we interested in marine fish landings? Now, marine fish landings and uh, inland fish landings has got some distinctness. Apart from the open uh, close season, some ban or some erratic monsoon and uh, some cyclones, the fishermen venture into the sea on a day-to-day -day basis and every day there is fish. Whereas aquaculture or the inland sector has got considerable gestation period. You get a crop after six months. In six, after six months, there'll be huge crop. And after that, so the day-to-day -day fish demand and supply are basically met by the marine fish landings. So it assumes, assumes, assumes significance. And also since there is perennial water in the sea when compared to reservoirs and all, there is more production coming from this on a day-to-day -day basis. So I mean to tell that the 8 million tons in aquaculture comes as a bulk, whereas the marine fish landings comes on a day-to-day -day basis. If you ask, ask me, how is empowerment happened in the, in the country, in the agriculture sector? Then I'll talk about the white revolution which happened in your own state of Gujarat, the place where you are Anand, because the Amul cooperative societies with a, with a cow, the fisher, the woman over there working in animal husbandry could have a cow. They get milk every day. They could send, sell the milk and get an income on a day-to-day -day basis, which led to the white revolution. And that kind of model was supported across the whole of the, whether it's a Milma, the Avin, the Shira, all these milk producers company or cooperatives have taken the example from those, for those particular place. So as an agriculture scientist, if you ask me, what is the best thing which you could give a, a woman or a man, in the, a farmer in this country to empower themselves? I'll tell it's not fish. It is not rice. It is not wheat. It is not vegetable. It is a cow because the cow is going to give milk every day and every day, one or two liters of milk will eat them. 60 to 70 rupees per day and their households will go without distress sale and the subsistence is taken care. So during the last year, we were quite surprising. The marine fishery scientists always believe that the west coast of India is more productive in terms of bathymetry, oceanography, upwelling, El Nino and all these things. And we often tell that two thirds of the total fish production in the country comes from the west coast. And now if you see it is slowly changing tilt with Tamil Nadu, Andhra and all are showing, West Bengal are showing impressive growth over the last years. And last year in Tamil Nadu topped, followed by Gujarat and Kerala.
and if you see we are quite thankful to the the southwest coast they produce around 60% and 40% comes from the south southeast and northeast coast the major fish producing zone is from the southwest comprising of kerala karnataka and goa and maharashtra and gujarat add to northwest which contributes around 30% now if you see the different kind of fish i take this kind of example because if you if you start talking to the different people in the country where in the coastline they'll tell the most preferred fish could be sardine mackerel and uh, some some people tell they might prefer sea fish pomfret because of the high value fish and on a on a on a on a on a country base if you ask most of the people will be interested in carp so there is a huge competition in carp and sardine among the among the most preferred fish but if if you give a fisherman a fish trader in kerala some fish to sell he will be most happy to sell sardine because sardine has become an industrial fish which is known to people and it is consumed across without any hassles and and it is being sold on sold easily and on a, on a day to day basis so the if you see the fish con composition the pelagic contributes 48% the demersal 34 crustaceans and cephalopods 12 and 6 even the crustaceans the shrimps are, all, are losing momentum again thanks to huge production from surat and from gujarat and also the different parts of andhra where the litopenes venama is slowly overtaking the wild shrimp when it comes to export now again uh, you talk about fishery sector but there is intersectoral disparity the mechanized sector contributes to around 83% of the fish catch whereas the non mechanized whether the marginal farmers has got a contribution of just 1%. This indicates that 90% of the people have 1% of the fish and 10% uh, of the people get 99% of the fish. This is a huge mismatch or a paradox which exists in the sector. Now again I am trying to see that how the fishes are being available. Now you know that uh, we have three different kinds of vessels the mechanized motorized and the non mechanized this is based upon the use of uh, manual power or the machine power in terms of uh, chowing as well as cruising if you use both mechanized power motor then in the engine power then it is known as mechanized in motorized you use it for uh, cruising but for chowing you use manual power in non mechanized you are you are simply using you are simply using the manual power to cruise as well as chow so this indicates that there are 1097 species which of marine species which are currently being harvested of this only six number of species are exclusively caught in the non mechanized sector that means 99 percentage of the 90 percent of the fishermen are having an exclusive mechanism to catch only six number of fish that is 0.6 percentage whereas there is a huge fight over the 340 indicated blue shade across the different sectors and finally they end up because their cruise speed and the capacity technology technology and all is superior when compared to this so this further leads to marginalization of the non mechanized sector now again you see these are the species diversity across the different parts now you find that the maximum diversity of fish is found in the southeast and southwest coast you have around 830 and 781 species across in the northwest that means the area of spoken by gujarat you have got 598 species there also you could see that 285 species are being harvested across the different zones in this country now this is how a supply chain operates in the domestic this is quite known to everyone but i just want to put so that uh, the crowd becomes more ho homogeneous it's a fisherman and a consumer there are could be many players some some could be agent middlemen some could be merchant middlemen the wholesalers retailers but the fact of the matter is for every 100 rupees which a consumer pay the 65 rupees which the fishermen get there is a margin of 35 rupees in this 35 rupees almost 27 to 28 rupees is taken as marketing margin and the marketing cost remains 7 to 8 rupees which indicates that it's hardly less than 20% so this 20% indicates that there is no value addition happening or the quality of the fish is not being improved leave alone the insulated trucks leave alone the grading the standardizing nothing happens thereby the shelf life of the fish is being improved only by adding some of the poisonous chemicals like formalin and others this is the supply chain export 
Fortunately, the supply chain exports are much more better with limited marketing middlemen. They either have a forward contract at a percentage margin of proc procurement, where these particular markets are extremely better when compared to the domestic marketing network. I was, uh, I'll drink some water. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Can I continue? Yes, sir. So can I continue? Continue, continue sir. Continue, yeah. sir. Okay. I was just comparing the domestic vis-a-vis -vis the export prices of some of the major species over the last many years, actually. This table is only up till 2015-16, but the, the same trend continues. And uh, if you see the domestic prices, see the domestic price for ribbon fish is 172, palm fruit is 572, tuna is 217, mackerel 196, sardine 84, CFH 486, scoot 242, cuttlefish 233, and shrimps 409. Now, if you compare the export market prices and the domestic market prices, you could see that some of the major species, the high value species, are being currently sold at a lower price in the export market when compared to the domestic market prices, except for shrimp. Shrimp, you could see it is 544 and 409. So using the domestic resource cost method or the comparative advantage of export, we always tend to believe that a country should be exporting fish when it has got a higher price in the international market when compared to the domestic market. Whether it's a Ricardian theory or the Hexerulean theory, whichever theory talks about, it talks about all these things. But now if you see our export market prices and domestic market prices, we understand that most of the fish which could be consumed in the country in the domestic market are available at a higher prices. And this is what we literally mean, what is known as the paradox of export. The paradox of export states that we are selling fish in the export, export market at the lower price when compared to the domestic prices because the exporters tend to believe in revenue gains through quantity and not by prices. And thereby, they are trying to reap in the economies of scale. So the exporters are literally acting like wholesale markets, wholesale merchants, where they sell more quantity with minimal margin. So this became a concern. And then we have reported this to MPDA, leading to many changes in the policies of export. Now, sardine cannot be exported as easily as it used to be exported. Now, again, we saw for the valuation of fish which happens, we try to decompose the total, total value of the fish. And now when we understood that, the export market, the change in mean quantity for every 100 rupees realized in the export, 56 rupees comes, from, comes through the quantity change, 15% from the value, unit value change, and 26% comes in, in as an interaction between these two. Whereas in the domestic market, prices tend to have 70%, 18% quantity and 11. So what this particular table indicates that the export markets is driven by quantity, 56.69, whereas the domestic market is driven by prices. So since there is no genuine demand across identified demand, there is a tendency for exporters even to sell those particular fishes which are available in the market to the export market at a reasonable prices. That's why we find that the prices are driving the domestic market. Now, if you remember the earlier slides which I talked about, I was telling that some of the some of the species are declining over the years. The sardine is on the decline, the mackerel is on the decline, the, the shrimps are on the decline. The, the rate of reduction in landings is currently being negated by increase in unit prices. The fishermen tend to believe that there is a reduction in fish landings, but they're okay with it for now because the increase in unit prices are much higher than the decrease in the landings. So then you have a huge question in place that should we really export fish? Now, the export markets are a huge impediment. One is a buyer's market. They determine the prices. That's a seasonal demand. More than 60% goes during the Japanese New Year and the, and the New Year. And it goes to the different, uh, different Chinese market. The Southeast Asia is the largest, largest importer of fish from India in terms of uh, fin fish. There is huge competition. There is competition from Vietnam, Thailand, and most of the ASEAN countries. There is a risk. 
because since the buyers market they decide whether it is going to be a ppm ppb or so there are huge uncertainties like the covid is an uncertainty whereas in the domestic trade we have inelastic supply we cannot improve production overnight there is geographical differentiation i told about the west and the east the north and the seasonality of landings middlemen but with the increasing purchasing power the price discrimination realization awareness matching demand and supply and efficient marketing now we are currently facing a new question of why can we tap in the domestic market so with this we thought that let's initially see what's the demand and supply pattern of fish in india so we did for 2020 2025 2030 2030 and 2035 for demand and supply so the population is indicated as 1.36 growing at 3 to 2.5 to 3 percent so in 2035 we are going to have a population 1.6 billion will be surpassing china by around 2030 or so and fish eaters also we believe that 65 will go up to 70 during 2035 and the total demand of fish will be hovering around 10.56 to 13.61 million tons but in the supply side the marine should be around 4.41 but i have i've understood that uh, uh, because of uh, increasing catch per unit effort the harvesting of oceanic squid oceanic tuna new species being emerged because of climate change we have new species like odonis niger lagocephalus enormis all these fish we might get up to around 5 million tons in, in by 2085 2035 so inland fish is growing impressively at right now around 8.62 it might go up to 13.5 we have to really catch in and the reservoir productivity has to improve the river and production has to improve from from 2 to 3 kg to 10 kg the reservoir production has to improve so the total supply could be around 12 to 18 so the demand is uh, it is across 10 to 13 whereas the total supply is 12 to 18 so but remember that there are huge exports happening there is a wastage there is a bait industry all these things would lead to the last column of 9.69 to 11.2 12.93 and 13.74 so with the understanding that the fish population the population of the country is increasing that's for sure the fish eaters are going to improve there is a kind of uncertainty but again the inland sector is going to grow much beyond the beyond the production level so it is going to increase with that we will be having a demand supply gap which will be negated by 2030 2035 so for which what is required is there should be tremendous growth in the inland sector as well as tremendous growth in the fish eating then only the demand and supply gap could be could be on parity now i was going on the different benefits of fish consumption i had a snapshot i read across many many of the international journals and fortunately every tom dick and harry are now interested you can see the see the publication 2016 2008 all these things are indicating that fish consumption is going to improve whether it's a pregnant woman whether the seafood omega 3 fatty acid pregnancy uh, the link sensory characteristic consumer attitudes everything is going on a, on a good note so it seems that fish consumption is going to increase and on a jovial note i tell that uh, i don't know whether all these things are going to help me a lot but we used to eat fish the current consumption of fish in kerala as per our study and has been certified by the government is we eat around 27 to 30 kg per person per year and around 85% of the population of the state eat fish is what we have done but some of the states are showing not so impressive growth rate in terms of this so this is how the fish consumption is going to behave now it is going to be in 2013 it was around 5.8 now it is 6.5 but remember this is across the total population when it is being project projected across fish eating population on 60 to 65% the present fish consumption is is around 9 kg as per the icmr recommendation of 12 now again i was interested to see that what is the fish demand over the period of time so in 2020 we have around 13.8 million tons in 2025 some of the estimates are going to indicate that we are going to need, we are going to require 20.25 and uh, in 22 million tons and in 2030 it's going to be 25 million tons and you could see what is the contribution which is going to happen across this is another another version of the demand and supply relationship which is done by uh, dr iapen recently in 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 a seminar in a webinar which he had did so now the big question is how much does the nation eats actually again i'll tell you everybody speaks about eating fish and we don't have any specific st uh, statistics on how much does the how much fish eaters are in this country 
but we have many many papers written many graphical infographics indicating that how much of the people in the country eat fish now you could see in kerala 97% of the people eat fish and the data as per this particular thing which has come up in the indian express indicates that 40% of the people in gujarat eat fish so it goes on changing and i was also a bit baffled by seeing all these things then i started the fish consumption status across the country there also you find that a lot of changes are happening so we want to rely upon one particular set of data which we have published in 2000 2003 which is indicated in how the fish fishing business evolved in the state which took data from the handbook of fishery statistics and if you see countries like uh, uh, states like gujarat you could find a lot of yellow yellow which indicates that those are fish surplus states when compared to production and consumption so the one in yellow the andhra and all these things are those particular state which produce considerable amount of fish and uh, you could see it is uh, gujarat is there andhra is there madhya pradesh is there and also himachal pradesh is there where there where they don't consume a lot of fish now we have a problem in fish consumption and distribution what are the problems leading to this the first thing is the different kind of species now as a as a keralite if you give me carp i'm hesitant to eat if you go to north the northeast then they are not inter they are interested only in the local species from there if you go to if you go to andhra they want to eat only carp so and the taste of preference also changes across the people some of the people like the the mid portion people some of the people don't eat head some of the people like only tail some of the people don't eat the bones and if you see the price fluctuation the price fluctuation changes intra day the moment it lands there is a price at the end the prices goes down so as a consumer i suggest that the best time to buy price fish is in the night and also try to target one that particular trader who doesn't have a storage facility of ice and there is availability issues fishes may not be available i would like to have fish but it is not available due to covid it could be monsoon troll ban accessibility is important i would like to buy fish from the landing center because they are assume that it is fresh but i may not be able to reach there i'm not accessible over there when it comes to affordability i would like to eat sardine day and day in and out west bengal people will like to have hilsa our uh, people from uh, konkan will like to eat uh, sear fish but the fact is the prices are not affordable then it comes to quality and hygiene when i go to the fish market i need to sometimes i need to close my nose because there is a lot of smell or there could be drains out so the quality the hygiene and all of a sudden i read in paper that uh, uh, the the fishes have been treated with ammonia formalin so the quality and hygiene and the kind of value addition over the years actually now if you have seen the ready to serve ready to cook kind of thing comes have come up through the online fish market the value addition is also not high when compared so again the culture and customs are also important in tamil nadu they produce a lot of fish but they don't eat lot of fish because some due to religious uh, religious uh, inclinations or orientation and some of the customs they may not eat fish on a friday they may not eat fish on a thursday and they might not eat it during a particular certain months so all these things make the consumption and and distribution become more and more intricate now i was seeing some of the good options of having climate change so i am foreseeing climate change as a good means towards fish consumption and i'll tell why so climate change people talk about everybody talks about climate change if not climate change there would have been not enough funding across the globe i remember 1991 liberalization privatization globalization if dr manmohan singh wasn't having then probably we wouldn't have got large fund so everybody started doing the economists started analyzing that pre liberalization post liberalization it happened in 1991 after in 2005 we got more funding opportunity people started talking about wto post wto pre wto 2005 now everybody is interested to talk about climate change vulnerability so we believe that consequent to climate change there is clear cut evidence of sea level rise and extreme events the habitat change and the revenue is increasing the fisher livelihood and uncertainties are going to improve and since it's going to be impacting the whole world the management options are going to be complex and difficult we need time frame felt needs because it's quite difficult to move a fisherman from the place of birth so that is that is uh, inertia to move from displacement and also the the methodology adaptation mitigation options are going to be multi pronged 
and involving even psychological measures actually now climate change for this particular discussion on consumption i would like to put it on a positive note climate change was perceived to be good for climate dependent pelagic fishery so we thought that a lot of pelagic fishes are going to improve the la the larval movement will take uh, the phytoplanktons the phytoplanktons are going to be available across so more more uh, small feeders like the pelagic the clupids might come come up and but we found that the indian mackerels have gone down pelagic started extending the boundary the corals are vulnerable the tuna tuna have mi migrated the threatened beams have got phenological changes they started breeding earlier it used to breed in december now it started breeding in in september and we got the emergence of new species the puffer fish and the adonis niger which i was talking the catch reduction and also the shift in temperate availability of fish was also found so this is one small case if you remember this is an extension of a distribution boundary of sardine in 1961 76 you could see the west coast of india uh, the red lines indicate the larger production centers it was most in kerala the epicenter was in kerala and we could find minimal fish across the northwest coast and during 77 86 slowly it reached the southeast coast of tamil nadu and a bit in andhra and in 87 96 you could find that it started again moving to the four zones now you could see that the spread of the fish has also started moving and in 2007 15 and even up to 2020 we find that sardine is available across now what has happened let's say 1961 76 the total sardine production was 100 as an index now in 2015 20 the index has come to 120 now in 61 76 when i talked about the index of 100 the 100 was in the west zone let's say 80 and 20 now in 2015 plus if you compare now it has become almost 25% each across now people in gujarat and west bengal for the matter northwest zone and the northeast zone can have a taste of sardine which was not earlier available but i go with this as a caution because if you're not going to eat sardine which is available in your place at a cheaper price it's a new fish if you don't eat it probably you are creating misery to the southern southern part of the country why because if sardine is not being put to food uses it is going it's going to be used under the for the bait industry the fish meal industry and for the capture based aquaculture system it is going to be a better feed conversion ratios so it is important that these fish need to be harvested partaken not only harvested but also consumed and if you don't want to harvest it then probably you're going to lose it if you are not going to consume it if you are going to transport this back to the southern state probably without proper marketing and all if this fish is going to come then probably this is going to create quality losses and remember the capture based aquaculture system being fed by a carnivorous for a carnivorous species by sardine is not going to improve the fish food security of this country by the capture fishery is open sea cage culture you might be harvesting 400 kg worth of fish by feeding 25 rupees or 50 rupees kilogram of uh, sardine the feed conversion ratio could be 3 3 3 so 150 rupees that is 3 kilogram of sardine at 50 rupees per kilogram is going to yield a 400 rupee carnivorous fish is good great it's good to the economy but remember the 400 rupee kilogram fish is going to be consumed by a higher income group whereas the 50 rupees fish of sardine is going to cater to the fish food security of the marginal and average fish consumers like us so when you have a chance of extension of this boundary it is important that this kind of fish has to be consumed for which what is important we'll come later on that now mackerel also has got some distribution shift mackerel what happened was mackerel started feeling that oh now it's it's very hot up up let me do one thing let me go down so it has gone deeper because the temperature are in are in that high in the deeper zones so what happens this was also harvested earlier this was used to be harvested by the non mechanized the traditional fishermen now this is being harvested by the trawlers so what happens is the fishermen income of the traditional sector has also decreased now when it comes to threatened breams when all these fish started blooming in october march or december december what happens is 
there is a huge amount of fish being produced at that particular point of time leading to glut and also being not used for feeding purpose so considering all these things over the last 5 6 years we have been doing research to make us understand that what could be done to ensure that the fish availability accessibility and affordability could be improved so thankfully cmfri has taken a research project which is known as a fish market grid under the project during 2012 17 under the supply chain management project under our division which was led by me and my colleagues we started thinking of doing which is known as a fish market grid of india so what is this fish market grid of india indicates i have divided the market in 10 dimensions let's say there is a market where well there is a there, there is a big market there is a lighthouse landing center which is, let us say that is a market so i have 10 dimension which indicates location location will be done by under the gis we will have lat long position the axis indicates that how far is the market near to the bus station the airport the port the railway station so that fish could come what is the timing of the market is there any closure of the market what are the time it is being operated in early morning market or a 24 market what is the conduct of the market means how many buyers and sellers are there how many traders register there what are the species which are being traded from where the species arrives whether from it comes from the state different countries disposal and what is the infrastructure adequacy in that particular market what are the regulations and what are the market intelligence in terms of news and information so all these 10 kinds of dimensions were plotted for an individual market and this particular market we had developed a conceptual framework the conceptual framework is was practiced and was successful in kerala this was the conceptual framework in which we developed so i'll go with that for which we have identified around 128 commercially traded species we identified the, those species because this is going to collect be collected based upon the length weight relationship which is normally done unlike what it did was we wanted to see what is the count per kilogram that means 40 count of sardine leads to 1 kilogram and we differentiated into smaller sizes so this was the manual which was used by the different enumerators who did this and finally we developed what is known as a decision support system the decision support system indicates that there are mostly five groups of stakeholders who are going to get benefit out of this the first could be the fishers they want to know where i could be selling this market for example let, let's say there is a market in vengurla a landing center in vengurla in, in maharashtra they have produced around 100 tons of cuttlefish they don't but they want to know where they could sell it using the decision support system that is a fish market price information system they'll be able to know where they'll be able to sell and the marketers and traders in where the fishes are available the consumers would like to know where this fish is being sold the exporters could could talk to that particular market and they get can get the fish and the policy planners in developing marketing regulations so this was the data we did we have around 300 markets collected for kerala the markets include landing centers wholesale market retail centers and terminal markets where the prices of weekly price were collected with size differentials and uh, the these fish markets were mounted on a gis platform with lat long position and through ms access the price information we developed what is known as the fish market grid now google is not supporting because this was done on a pilot basis is not supporting otherwise the working model which i have indicated would take us to that uh, that market on 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 a real time but i have taken some snapshots so this is the market grid when i find the market grid the green color indicates the green indicators in in indices our legends indicates that those are the markets in kerala where this particular study is being done and uh, this is the decision support system on the right side you will find the care, uh, the state district market species type check and price so for in the kerala different different districts market everything are being selected and from there you identify you want to you want to check i want to check for tuna where it is available at a price of less than 200 rupees when you search it you will get the outputs the market name the fish name and the price per kilogram is being indicated so this is one kind of uh, query now if you see on the on the left hand side left and bottom you find those particular markets where tuna is being available at a price less than 200 rupees so 
this is available in cmfri at that particular point of time where we started this as a pilot project and where people could come and see where the markets are available again we could do for tuna less than 200 this is one we wanted to uh, find uh, you can see that yellow yellow box where we wanted to dispose around 1000 kg of shrimps where the which are the markets where this could be sold so then they found that those are the different markets 30000 10000 there are different markets indicated in blue underlined ones in those markets the fishes are being traded on a day to day basis so the possible areas of interest which are to the stakeholders is the market access what is the transport available what the timings of the market day and night how many sellers and buyers fish arrival and fish arrival fish arrival and disposal quantity of species available the adequacy all these things are available now one more thing which could have, which could be of interest under the climate change regime is going to be the carbon emission the carbon footprints under each kind of fish being produced you might be knowing that under the under the subsidy regime it is being found that the the world trade organization has understood the fact that indian fisheries of 3.56 million tons is mostly subsistence and the carbon dioxide emissions are going to be lower and uh, if you are on a comparison there is a global commitment by all countries to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide emission so we wanted to see what is the kind of carbon dioxide emissions which is happening across the different sectors and for which we identified four stages that is the pre harvest the harvest the post harvest and consumption and we understood that for every 1 kg of fish being produced in the traditional sector which you can indicate as the last one the last column the total 0.11 kg of carbon dioxide is emitted whereas in mechanized it's going to be 2.24 motorized it's going to be 1.46 and traditional as i said earlier it's 0.11 which indicates that under the kyoto protocol when there is carbon emissions to be reduced then probably our fishing is more sustainable green fishing and under the blue economy our fishes might might fetch larger prices in the future so if you see the major component of carbon emission in the motorized sector as well as the mechanized sector is going to be the harvest sector which uses a lot of diesel and that is why it is 1.02 and 1.42 respectively for motorized and mechanized sector so when you come to when you come to fish eaters actually i was talking about a place where only 60% of the people eat fish the 40% doesn't eat fish among the 60% these people are mostly localized across the coastal coastal states more than 70% of the fish consumers are in the coastal say the 30% are slowly coming up but we find more consumption is across the 70% who lives in the coastline and we were we were asking them that are you aware about the low export price of high value fishes most of the people are not knowing that actually more than 20, average 20% of the people were not knowing that the price of uh, all the exported species other than shrimps were were lower in the international market they were never they were they were not knowing and they were also interested to say they are willing to pay if willing to pay more price if this kind of fish is available so 32 to 38% of the people across chennai kochi and mumbai where we did the study have indicated that they are willing to pay more price that is among the fish eating consumers there is a tendency of for people to eat more fish even at a higher price so this is something which is a brownie for increased consumption of fish in the future now i was thinking that what are going to be the major augmenting fish consumption attributes what are those things are which are going to improve fish consumption in the future one campaign you talk about sunday or monday rose go one day likewise we need to have campaigns i think the most important person who has done a lot of campaign with that has been a former dg dr ayapen who always comes with a new campaign like fish fish to eat fish is wealth next the distribution of fish the distribution of fish is a major issue because there is a huge distance between the production centers and consumption centers for example a fish which is caught in veravel may not be having large buyers in veravel other than the local people the fish has to be distributed efficiently the third is the diversification diversification in the sense that, that most of the areas where the fish consumption has not increased over the years because there are not many fish you talk about bassa in certain region you talk about the carps those is one thing now the online markets are coming up recently we did a study in in maharashtra 
that how much is the fish consumption improving as per online fish marketing it could be the whatsapp it could be the uh, it could be the fresh fish these online markets are slowly gearing up we did a study in 2018 and 2020 their business share has gone from 3% to almost 10% again awareness is important people talk about fish i think the uh, a big question which we need to ask our faculty members is that how many of you eat fish most of the people don't eat fish so the awareness has to come from within then the prices are not known the price differentials are not known that is why the affordability availability and accessibility par paradigms are being taken and we have come up with decision support system imports now you remember that now we don't have only one kind of we have the fuji apple we have the australian apple now the kashmiri apple was having uh, they were they were ruling the roost at certain point of time now the imports are also coming now there is huge imports of hilsa coming which cater to the west bengal market climate change as i told earlier as is going to improve more fish distribution throughout and we are going to have it green fishing i believe that in the future there is going to be an organic farming likewise an organic fish where there'll be a tag that this kind of fish was caught in that particular sea at this lat long position and it has got 10% carbon emission that's why it is kind of green fishing so more and more traditional and more and more fuel efficient technologies would lead to green fishing emitting lesser carbon range shift species diversity more and more species diversity leads branding is important there should be a policy thanks to prime minister matsi sampad yojana this kind of policy blue revolution even to seaweed is going to create a huge impetus in farming as well as production so i tell jb says law states that supply creates its own demand so when there is more supply in the market probably you are going to have going to have more fish the taste and the preferences and the market is also going to be important in addition to value addition so considering a work which we did on the decision support system the fish market grid under the prime minister matsi sampad yojana pmmsy then national fisheries development board and the minister of fisheries is granted as a new project which is in place across the different parts of the country and slowly is going to be uh, extended up to gujarat too this particular project is known as the e marketing intervention it's known as malsya malsya sambad it's development of integrated fish market and price information system for indian fishery sector which has got three objectives the first objective is to develop a fish market information system we are not sure about where the markets are how do you define a market a market is a place where buying and selling happens in that case online market is also market wholesale market retail market terminal market short term markets three or four ladies sitting together as an empowerment means is also market so these are the kind of markets which you are going to identify it's believed that there are around 10000 to 15000 markets in this country which could be small big medium large and the second is to develop a price information system so in the price information system what we have done is we have identified 150 species of fish 120 marine and 30 inland these fishes are available with their photographs and these are being available and mounted on a on a web portal or a, or or a android mobile and the prices are being collected from the market on a weekly basis the enumerators are identified from the market itself it's a means of their empowerment they are paid 1500 rupees per day this project is currently on operation in 150 markets now by this by next march it is going to be 500 1500 this was considered important and is included under, under the prime minister matsi sampad yojana and the last one is we are trying going to have a trade facilitating platform like the epida does for the agriculture marketing we are planning to have a trade facilitating platform where the different markets the different stakeholders the different players will be involved in this particular market and trade would happen with certification of the market committee so more more players will come for the trade leading to a transparent fish transactions these are the 1500 markets we have taken you will see that gujarat also we have indicated 100 markets from 120 almost every part of the country is being covered now we are under an operation of 500 markets if we started slowly as a pilot project from the southern state we have started and now it had to take take on to the northeast coast now it is being included maharashtra also into it and these are the mobile applications of web portal so people who have access to this fish market price information system on the left side they have a mobile number they could be a trader they could be an enumerator they have a password when they go in they'll be having this matsya then sarvadan that is the that is the uh, that is the word which you use and these are the different kinds of portals which are available it could be a fish the market the price information and the auctions 
and from where you could be able to participate. Now it's in the development stage and it's gradually going to improve. And uh, taking a cue from all these things over the years, I understood that there are some certain major drivers for fish consumption. One, there is a huge production boom. When the production was mostly resorted to southern uh, southwest west coast of India in the marine sector, and probably the south, southeast, southeast part of the country for the inland sector, now it has grown up to almost every places. I've been to Chhattisgarh where I've seen open sea, sea cage culture flaring so high. And also the northeastern state where there's known a lot of traditional fishes which have become a culinary and also very, very popular across the, across the globe. So it's again, people started thinking that cheap source of nutrient, price of one kilogram a sardine is around 150. Uh, sea fish may cost 400 rupees. They have a wide range of fish at different prices. Whereas you could see the price of mutton, the, the protein, the proteinaceous substitutes for fish in terms of protein are quite high. We are aware of the health benefits. The income patterns are improving. People are interested in different, different lifestyle. They have got different taste and preferences. There are organized retail markets selling fish. Earlier fish was considered a taboo. I remember I was, I was working in Banswada in Rajasthan for a NAP project. I was trying to motivate some of the farmers to put some catfishes in their well, but they were reluctant to do. They were telling that rearing fish might be considered as a lower strata. I was telling them, no, 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 this kind of catfish is going to eat all these things. Garipini species, I'm telling Garipini is also African catfish. So they're telling, no, no, no. I was telling them these kind of fish is going to clean your, your, your well. But they said, no, 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 we can't have that because once we take this, we might be considered lower income strata. So those kind of things have changed. The awareness has changed. And also there is a change mindset where everybody started doing it. For example, one of the change mindset I'll tell in Kerala now, the state fish of Kerala is known as heteroplus. It's a suratensis, it's known as pearl spot. Now, when I started doing the species diversity index across the different markets, I found that next to sardine, mackerel and ribbon fish, the tilapia also has come up well, which indicates that people are changing the mindset from the marine fish towards inland fish. And even from, on a price point of view also, they, are, they consider that it is better to have tilapia, which is priced at 100 rupees a kilogram, rather than going for a, a pearl spot at 300 to 400 per kilogram. So understanding all these things. So some of the photographs you could see, these are some of the, some of the guidelines which are provided to some of the exporters over here. And they started trading fish in the domestic market under different brand names. The lobsters, some Abad and many other partners are currently trading in many of the malls and local places. So with all these things in mind, I could that how the market segmentation could be done. The market segmentation has to be done based on these many domains. One, it could be the local, the urban, where you'll be able to sell high value fishes, the semi-urban, where it could be local fishes, and the rural areas where you need to increase awareness. There could be high value, low value, you need to do a penetration into the market where you could do product differentiation as well as price discrimination is important. The sales could be done through online terminal markets or retail markets, everywhere could be done. Small, small hut shanties could be used as sales point. The fish could be, uh, the, the people in Kerala eat only marine fish. The people in Andhra eat both. Whereas the people in Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand eat only inland fish. There should be a flavor of this particular fish. There should be organized system. The Department of Fisheries should, should cater into an awareness wing so that more and more fish available is, is available. And the time season festivities based on, see there, is, there are a lot of uh, fishes like the Latus calcarifer, Mughal cephalus, Sanos, Sanos and all, which are being farmed for festivities over these particular places. And there is an orientation changes. Uh, I know I was in again in Banswada where the Muslims used to take halal fish. I think that the Muslims eat halal meat, even I do, but uh, I, was, I was wondering what is a halal fish? Then I went to the Bansoda market where I could see a lot of Bora Muslims. They find halal fish means the fish which is live fish. They will take it and they'll cut it. Those are the halal fish which is very popular. I could see large buckets in which the fishes were being kept and traded. The halal fish, the live fish were fetching more than 30 to 40 percent price than the other one. The taste and preferences in terms of size, cut pieces, the tentacles, the heads, the headless, all these things are going to come. And also the income should be a criteria in understanding that what is the kind of, uh, what is the kind of fish which could be sold across this market.
Now we're keeping something for the end. This is uh, food for thought for all of us, especially the uh, uh, people in Gujarat, the people are going to attend this lecture, people are not eating fish. The thing is the change should happen from us. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, that means if you're not, uh, start, you're not going to improve eating fish or start eating fish, nothing is gonna going to get better. So I was worried with the dictum that the National Center for Applied Economic Research is worried that fish consumption is increasing, not because of newer add-ins into fish consumers, but because of people like me and some of the people are eating more in fish. So if you want to improve more fish, more consumption, the best thing should start within ourselves. The charity begins at home. So let consumption starts from our own house so that fish consumption could be improved. Thank you all and God bless. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, really a uh, lively presentations. Unfortunately, I also eat fish. And I expect the same from the other faculties. I welcome uh, Dr. Swedish Prakash sir uh, in this session uh, because I request me that uh, I uh, ask um, two to three questions to Dr. Sam uh, in different areas of um, uh, fish marketing. And fortunately, we get uh, numbers of uh, questions uh, from the audience. I have also two to three. Uh, though uh, Dr. Sam sir has covered almost all the parts uh, uh, in different areas, uh, market segmentations, uh, in the productions, climatic change, fish market greed, a numbers of things. Still, I marked uh, two to three areas I like to uh, discuss with, with you, sir. Uh, first, I welcome Dr. Swedish, sir, and uh, I expect, sir, anything you can ask to Sam, sir, please go. Okay, good morning, Sam, sir, and good morning to all. Good morning, sir. Uh, very nice presentation has been given by Shyam Salimji and very lengthy and I think he has covered almost all aspects of the consumer behavior as well as the segmentation. And uh, But uh, I want to know Shyamji, ki, what is the actual, uh, what is the actual criteria you are going to select uh, for segmenting the fish markets? Because many things is uh, not, uh, you have given a number of the criteria, test, habits, price, all these things for segmenting the uh, fish market. So, but uh, many things is not in happening in the fisheries. That is common for all the product marketing, food product marketing. What are the major uh, uh, characteristics which will play important role in the segmentation of the fish markets? Okay, uh, thanks is a good question. Mm. I think, uh, uh, for a hypothetical example, we can take example of Gujarat. Yes. Okay. Uh, because um, uh, the fishermen over Gujarat gets only 60% of what the consumer pays. And the consumers are not located in that particular state. We understand only 40% of the fishermen, 40% uh, of the people in Gujarat eat fish means more than, and also they eat something like three, three kilograms per person per year. So, more than, more than 60 to 70% of the total fish produced in Gujarat goes out. So we need to do a market segmentation now. Now what is required is, let's say where the currently the consumption is existing. The current consumption could be across the coastal states. It could be coastal districts actually. And then it could be around the places where there is huge farm production, maybe in Surat and other places. And there we find that there could be large number of consumers existing. And then you again go and segment them, you'll understand that what is the criteria of the people who are eating fish? Are they high income group or low income group? And then you have again, we are, so it will be a matrix which is being developed. The first matrix will be, what is the place where they eat fish? Now, what is the kind of fish they eat? And what are the times during which they eat fish? And what is the religious orientation of this? So there will be a decision tree which is happening across that particular location and we find that this particular area is going to be a high priority region. And then if you go and do a cons consumer profiling, then you know that what are the kind of fish they eat? Do they get to the different tastes and preferences which they have? And in that case, there could be production, production impetus by having more and more fish being produced. So instead of seeing this as a totality of a particular state, we need to identify different markets are segmented, different regions. So, for example, let us say the Hindu community in Gujarat doesn't eat fish. It's a hypothesis. Okay, maybe it, it could be true. 
then we need to do them like what are the why don't they eat fish then they feel that okay fish is has got lot of bones the fish is not clean so there will be under they we understand there a lot of constraints will be identified and then i was telling you that the the department of fisheries should have a consumption wing which is mostly oriented towards towards improving fish consumption i'll tell you as and when the production and the consumption and the demand and supply parameters are going to be in parity probably the state is going to perform better now think of a state of kerala where 85 to 90% of the people eat fish everybody eats fish now we have been trying to improve inland fish production in this country in the, in the state it was not possible the total the total fish fish requirement is around 10 million 10 lakh tons or around 6 6 6 to 7 lakh tons comes from the marine and the 4 lakh tons is not improving now there has been lot of work there was an agency called aquaculture development agency of kerala there is firma many agencies are working and they are trying to tell that okay let us have ranching let us have new seeds let us have new hatchery when the production came i was selling about the jb says law supply creates its own demand now i never thought that i could eat tilapia i could never eat tilapia tilapia was a taboo to me but now after seeing tilapia the different parameters the price the product the form the the place of origin all these led to creating a consumption awareness within me and i also started doing so it could be done on a small small note small places from there in it improve it is going to be from it's going to be inductive approach yeah thank you okay, thank you thank you sir um, okay sir just uh, just uh, uh, can i, I ask for one more for uh, uh, sure sir sure sir carry uh, on shankar you you give very quickly and very short reply why the squads uh, export price is lesser when comparative to the domestic market okay uh very quickly uh, because i think uh, many other uh, may also be in queue to ask some questions okay yeah see the export prices because um if if you ask me like uh, sham ji what are the fish you eat i'll tell sardine mackerel sea fish shrimps and all those exportable species are there if you ask me whether i eat this fish daily then i'll tell no no, no i'll eat daily sardine i'll eat daily mackerel i may not eat daily shrimps i may not eat daily eat cephalopod sea fish because they are high income groups so this kind of fishes are currently tapped by the exporters and they find that they don't have a significant market within the state on a day to day basis because of they think let's let us export so they will be exporting them rather than selling in the market it is difficult to sell sea fish shrimps and all in a daily daily, daily market and people tend to eat this kind of fish on certain occasions only so sardine is not the case sardine is being sold every day but what happens is when i export i don't export in kilo i export a container a container is 20 tons and the, the the rental charges for the container is based on volumetric basis and not on quantity basis so what happens is i'll be putting in more and more shrimps into it and when i am unable to reach the 20 tons i'll put in mostly other species and then the revenue is mostly through quantity and not by prices okay thank you thank you sham okay sir as uh, uh, sir uh, what i found in the market that the, the poor man has a less consumer surplus to buy the fish and when you are young though you uh, buy the fish but you cannot cook the fish and in the third category when you are in your uh, after marriage life your uh, your second half will uh, uh, is very quality conscious he will not pick the fish in that junctures one market segmented uh, segmentation can be derived that how you target all these categories Sir, uh, just I complete, sir. A uh, clump of questions. Uh, second category is, sir. Um, one of your slides you have highlighted that there are two eighty-five uh, uh, heterogeneity or heterogeneous species are there, and um, uh, every species or every product has its own predicate. Predicate means, sir. Uh, suppose I eat rohu, uh, its taste will be different. Its customer will be different. I eat rohu, uh, a katla, the customer will be different. My question to you, sir. If it's so much variables are there, either I can customize all my strategy to to target the customers, or I can uh, take the single strategy to target the customers. Third one is if I change the strategy, so much heterogeneity uh, in the production start, uh, levels are there, then how the demand and supply can be taken into consideration? Um, yeah, uh, Shakti, it's a good question. Shakti, remember that India has got huge uh, biodiversity. Nice. the species diversity in the marine sector itself is around 2500 species 
and we harvest around 1100 species which i have indicated now in the 1100 species the commercially traded species are 150 only so there may be many number of species which are being traded i go to species species level right. because for example uh, you could talk about sear fish you could talk about tuna sada orientalis gymnosoma sardicolor oxys rochi okay tanas albicaris there are many different species but you talk about tuna alone so even though there is a huge diversity in terms of the biodiversity point of view when it comes to species diversity market diversity is restricted that's why i have only 150 species of there right. and to being a fisheries guy you or me if you ask me to give 10 species which you normally eat then you are coming down to 10 so you talk about diversity at that uh, academic interest but if it comes to actual market level you are not interested in seeing any other fish so for example you go to a market you go to a market and you see only five or six species you are always interested in so the market segmentation has already happened in your mindset the traders also they don't keep all the 150 species they only have certain species so the market segmentation prior to this has already been done but now to implement across non fish eating population is the biggest challenge which we face so i also have a problem i also have a problem i um, when i when i go to the market my market segmentation is based upon price right. my kids market uh, my market segmentation will be based upon the taste and preference my wife's pre- will be based upon the type of product i'm going to take whether i'm going to cut and clean cut and clean okay my 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 father will be interested to know exactly the place from where it is caught whether it is fresh or non fresh right. so this kind of segmentation happens at the end of the day the economists rule the rules by te- taking the fr- price the fish which is less pricey less pricey okay then looking i see for the eyes i see for the gills, gills. i see for the skin i'll get it actually so what is required on a global level is the biggest thing i was t- talking to even the ddg and ddg and all at certain point of time as an economist was sir we need to create awareness what is to create awareness sir you have to start eating fish right you have right. to start so unless and until you don't start eating fish then probably you are not able to do so. and also see um, see the price of chicken the wenki's chicken the suguna chicken see the kind of marketing network they have developed because of that kind of marketing the, the price of the chicken remains with a 10 to 20% fluctuations across the different market the price won't change but whereas in this case there is a marketing cartel which is operating based on that the prices right. tend to be different and right. also we don't have a homogeneous quality the chicken we have only three or four sizes less than 2 kg more than 2 kg size right. whereas in the case of fish you see the count we see the quality from where it is being served so i have found in a market they were telling pending sardine and sardine pending sardine and sardine is sardine which is caught today is sardine pending nice. sardine is the sardine which is caught yesterday so the heterogeneity of the product also lead to lot of complications in all these things thank you thanks sir uh, you have highlighted uh, that uh, ifn ifn sir has uh, given the numbers of good message in the fishery sectors and i keep one of the message that fish is healthy but in, when you bifurcate the fish is healthy fish is a commodity and healthy is a perception how you change the perceptions when when the negative uh, uh, promotional message will come when the peace peace has been targeted just like the peace uh, is the pc one uh, when there is the covid uh, it comes from the china do then don't eat the peace if this type of the perce- perception will going on then how you can change the opinion that peace is the healthy actually uh, uh, i'll i'll talk some med- medicine now i'll talk about medicine Now, you talk about covid we talk about covid and uh, we were trying to find out vaccines many people are coming up with vaccines and all of a sudden we found that hydroxychloroquine is going to be good in in preventing covid so people started taking it now the ayush the homeopathy doctor started telling that arsenic album 30 is going to stop covid and all the people in the in, in the state started taking covid and now people started comparing that okay i have taken arsenic album so i will not have covid and people and and listening to this many people started taking covid so to me f- eating fish you are going to be healthy is also perception okay i like fish it. not only because of being healthy okay if you want okay then i'll tell you recently i had a i had a health check up and they told you your uric acid is high okay so oh, that was worrying me then i was asking them why no no you have not you should not eat sardine you should not eat anchovies oh my god if you don't eat anchovies and sardine then what is that you're going to eat now if right. you eat yeah, the shellfish then they'll tell uric acid is going to be high 
now the doctors are even telling that eating sardine and anchovies also lead to having increasing increasing uric acid so when this is the kind of thing which happens there is a whole lot of nexus which happening across this particular market and that's why we are unable to come up with something so to me eating fish is a habit and i don't think it's going to be as healthy as people tell but i feel eating fish makes me healthy wealthy and wise right sir and uh, so someone is asking that uh, how can you determine a uh, fish is the right business to start um you should have a passion for fishery sector that's the most important thing you should go into the into the fish market at morning 4 o'clock if you could wake up and go to a fish market at morning 4 o'clock see the trade enjoy that kind of noise enjoy that kind of listening to bad words okay then you are partly done the second thing is uh, you have to invest in your time in fish business you have to invest your time in fish in during covid time i saw some of the some of the returnees from the middle east they came and started selling fish in the market they get good prices actually so fish is going to be a good opportunity to work on because the kind of support which the nfdb is giving to a, a startup venture capitalist and all is high so if it is going to continue it is easy so if somebody is going to work on it then i have some more motivational sessions for them i could help them right sir sir uh, one of my observations though uh, online uh, fish retailing is increasing day by day but uh, in that segment we found the frozen fish do you think that the live fish and the fresh fish also comes to the online segment uh see uh, um, again uh, there has been a case wherein there is one company which indicate that daily fish uh, and okay yeah. i don't want to take uh, the name of that so daily fish i thought was daily fish then i thought okay they catch on a day to day basis and they give it to you okay i was in the notion i started buying that fish and i felt that the fish wasn't as as good as daily fresh so it was not daily fresh it was daily fish that means the fish has been caught has been kept in the storage houses for some reasonably good good time attractive packing and is being sent to us now the online fish markets may not cater to the large segment of the people it may be good for a double income group where the husband and wife works it is coming in cut cut pieces and all so you just need to ready to cook or ready to serve kind of things will happen a recent study which we did in ernakulam and the online fish market indicates that they hardly have just 1% of the total market share just 1% of the total market share and also they were not finding it easy because they can't have a large showroom to keep all those things so they used to have a small uh, small uh, office over here and the fish still used to come 30 40 kilometers far off so because they don't have such storage spaces for that so online fish marketing appears to be catchy and fashion but it takes some more time to come up in the way as we think right sir uh, it's, it's a very good discussions and uh, from your presentations i pick all the uh, uh, positive part that uh, motivate us to do the uh, fisheries particular in the gujarat one of uh, your point is that gujarat is maybe the fish bowl of india and in the coming decades uh, the scenario will change same production areas will find the congestion will be gear up gujarat has the better marketing efficiency you have highlighted uh in gujarat a uh, white revolution has been started uh, expecting that there will be the blue revolution and the congestion will change the scenario and the mindset of the particular areas though there is uh, the mismatch of the paradox in the uh, important export sectors uh, still uh, the covid will be give a better chance uh, that uh, in coming date we will stick to the Im- uh, internal market rather than the export uh, export market sir i have gone through your one of your research publications do we really need a sport and in that paper also you have highlighted numbers of point that uh, we should focus more on the internal market rather than the export, uh, external market and in these few words uh, i really thankful uh, uh, dr sam selin sir and uh, swadesh prakash sir because uh, um, swadesh prakash sir uh, gave me uh, in the telephone in the last night that i really interested to be join uh, in the sam selin sir sport uh, it helped especially uh, thank uh, i need to specially thank swadesh ji because he's my good friend more than that he's a busy person and i think he has been spending the whole time with me thank you very much probably this is the first time that uh, he should he was able to spend some even in a holiday thank you thank you sir and uh, in the future also when i need any type of the uh, queries or the help i will definitely call you and expect your support in this my pleasure my pleasure thank you very much thank you sir uh, thank you sir thank yeah, you my regards to all the organizers the seniors and the people who have listened to us Uh, thank you very much as i told you my knowledge is just handful and what i don't know is the ocean 
Thank okay. you, sir.